Lesson uh, 5.2, Module 5, Lesson 2, is about identifying intercepts, and that would be where a line on a graph intersects the x-axis or the y-axis. Okay. As we walk through these examples, I think you're going to get an idea of what they're talking about. So we've got miners exploring 90 feet underground, and the miners ascend in an elevator at a constant rate over a period of three minutes until they reach the surface. So in the coordinate grid, the horizontal axis represents the time in minutes, and the vertical axis represents the miner's elevation. Okay, so we're actually uh, graphing in quadrant four, if you remember your coordinate uh, plane, one, two, three, and four. Um, and that is because the elevations are negative, because the, these guys are underground. So what point represents the miner's elevation at the beginning of the ascent? Well, at the beginning of the time period, at time equals zero, they're at a, an elevation of negative 90. So the x value is zero, and the y value is negative 90. What point represents the miner's elevation at the end of the ascent? Well, at the end of the ascent, they are now at the surface. And the information said that that occurs at time equals three minutes. So here, uh, three minutes have gone by. That's the x value. And their y value is 0 because they're back at the surface. OK, and it says to connect the points uh, with a line segment. So let me do that. All right, and then D says, what is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis? That's this point down here, because the y-axis is the vertical up and down. And what point does the graph cross the x-axis? That's this point right here, OK? The point where the graph crosses the y-axis, we are going to call the y-intercept. The point where the graph crosses the x-axis, we're going to call the x-intercept. All right, so I've marked my x-intercept and I've marked my y-intercept. I would like you to look carefully. Your y-intercept value always has an x of 0. Your x-intercept value always has a y of 0. And this is because for the y-intercept, the y-axis is at x equals 0, OK? So your x value is 0 for any point along the y-axis. For the x-intercept, your y value is 0, OK? Because y values are 0 for anything that's plotted on the x-axis, OK? All right, so on the discussion question, it says the point where the graph intersects the y-axis represents the beginning of the miner's ascent. Will the point where a graph intersects the y-axis always be the lowest point on a linear graph? Um, no, it won't always be. It depends on the situation. Here, it was the lowest point because we don't have any information for anything lower than that. Um, but depending on the situation, a lot of times we do have graphs that are continuous with arrows at both ends, and um, the y-intercept is not necessarily the lowest point. Okay, on 208, so remember our y-intercept and our x-intercept uh, were those two values. The y-intercept of graph is the y-coordinate of the point where the graph intersects the y-axis. The x-coordinate of this point is always 0. The y-intercept of the graph in our previous example was the uh, point 0, comma, negative 90. The x-intercept of a graph is the x-coordinate of the point where the graph intersects the x-axis. And the y-coordinate of this point is always 0. So I would take my highlighter and highlight that. Okay. What other ways can we find x and y intercepts? We graphed for the first example. Now we've got some other examples. This is written in standard form. And if you want to find the x-intercept, then what you're going to do is you're going to replace the y with 0 and solve for x. So they've done that. They place 0 in here for y 
and when you solve x is equal to 2. So the x-intercept is 2. To find the y-intercept, you're going to do just the opposite. So you'll replace x with 0, and you'll solve for y. The y-intercept is negative 3. So the x-intercept is going to have uh, an ordered pair of 2 comma 0, and the y-intercept is going to have an ordered pair of 0 comma 3. All right, so do b. OK, so remember, to find the x-intercept, replace the y with 0 and solve for x. To find the y-intercept, replace the x with 0 and solve for y. The x-intercept is negative 12. Ordered pair would be negative 12 comma 0. The y-intercept is 10. The ordered pair would be 0 comma 10. All right. If the point 5 comma 0 is on a graph, is 5 comma 0 the y-intercept of the graph? Explain. OK. Which one has an x with a number and a y with a 0? That's going to be your x-intercept. So is this the y-intercept? This is no. It is the x-intercept. OK, I'm now on page 209. We can start looking at actual situations um, that are described that we could um, solve for an x-intercept and a y-intercept um, and helps us kind of visualize what's going on in a graph or a particular situation. This particular question or illustration says, the Sandia Peak Tramway in Albuquerque, New Mexico travels a distance of about 4,500 meters to the top of Sandia Peak. Its speed is 300 meters per minute. The function f of x is equal to 4,500 minus 300x gives the tram's distance in meters from the top of the peak after x minutes. OK, so you've got a function. And remember, please, that if they give you f of x, that's kind of the same as saying y equals. OK, so to find the x-intercept, we're going to replace f of x. That's also known as y, with 0 and solve for x. OK, so we're going to put 0 here. And we're going to do a little bit of calculating, and we get that x is 15. So the x-intercept of 15 represents the 15 minutes it takes for the tram to reach the peak. So to find the y-intercept, replace x with 0 and solve, for x, and solve for f of x, which, remember, is really just like solving for y. Put a 0 in for x. The y-intercept of 4,500 represents the 4,500 meters to the peak when it starts. OK, so you can take an actual situation and, again, solve for the x-intercept and the y-intercept. And then it gives you two points to plot on a graph. B, we have a similar situation. A hot air balloon is 750 meters above the ground and begins to descend at a constant rate of 25 meters per minute. The function f of x is equal to 750 minus 25x represents the height of the hot air balloon after x minutes. So to find the x-intercept, remember we were, are replacing y with 0, or in this case they call it f of x, and then we're going to solve for x. So let's do that. So we, we replace f of x with 0. We solve for x, and we get 30. So the x-intercept of 30 represents the time for the balloon to reach the ground. Because if the balloon has reached the ground, then its height is now 0. And when its height is 0, that means 30 minutes has gone by, according to what we just solved for. Um, if you want the ordered pair for the x-intercept, it's right there. OK, let's find the y-intercept. All right, we replace x with 0 if we want the y-intercept, and then solve for y, or in this case, they're calling it f of x. The y-intercept of 750 represents the height above the ground when the hot air balloon starts. And there is your ordered pair. OK. Number 6 on page 210 says the temperature in an experiment is increased at a constant rate 
over a period of time until the temperature reaches zero degrees Celsius. The equation y equals 5 halves x minus 70 gives the temperature y in degrees Celsius x hours after the experiment begins. So find the x and y intercepts. All right, so first of all, I'm recognizing that my x, um, my independent variable, is hours, and my y, my dependent variable, is time. And here is my equation. So, oops. When the temperature is zero, that's a y value, okay? I can solve for x and get the x intercept. All right. So dividing by 5 halves, that's basically saying divided by 2 and a half. So 70 divided by 2 and a half. All right, 70 divided by 2 and a half gives me a value of 28. So my x-intercept is 28 comma 0, if I wanted to put it on a graph. And then if I wanted the y-intercept, I would put a 0 in for my x value, 5 halves times 0, and that's pretty easy. The y-intercept is going to be negative 70. So 0 comma, ne oops, 0 comma negative 70 is my y-intercept. Okay.